What's good fam? T-Money down in the dungeon uh, here to bring you guys part two of the update that was uh, I think I did on Monday night. Finally sitting around uh, getting the time to do this. It's like Wednesday at midnight. I should be in bed because I got to get up early for work tomorrow. But um, finally getting some alone time. Um, so yeah, it was now or never really. So because I really want to open this stuff up. So I've got a package from uh, Severin, um, 88 Films, Vinegar Syndrome, and Epic Pictures releasing. And tomorrow, I should be getting a huge package from Diabolic, uh, either tomorrow or Friday. So stay tuned for that. But um, So let's get into this. A bunch of really cool stuff. Um, some stuff I'm really looking forward to checking out. And um, yeah. Uh, I saw it too the other night I wanted to mention and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I thought it was pretty bad. I thought the story was, I just don't understand how people could say it was great. Are you kidding me? Like horrible CGI to the point where everything is the same. Every like bleh, monster looks the fucking same. Like the leper guy from the first one is basically like every single CGI monster in it too. There are good sequences. There's a really good sequence um, uh, underneath like a uh, stadium or whatever um, and some good practical, practical effects there that are ultimately ruined by CGI. Uh, and then there's a really cool um, sequence with some practical effects and a clown like applying shit to his face. That was cool. There's some good scenes. But most of it was ruined by CGI and like the Paul Bunyan scene where he's like up on the Paul Bunyan thing. That's awesome. That was great. Ruined by CGI when the actual Paul Bunyan thing came to life. It was ridiculously cheesy. And I have to say, I completely agree with Piz Owl. After seeing the movie, I didn't like it. Um, I thought there was no chemistry between the characters. It was forced and it was just bad good actors just they weren't given any good material i didn't like it i'm sorry but anyways i digress um 88 films so new one from 88 films really excited i've never seen this movie before severin just announced um this movie as well so if you guys want to wait i think October uh, or November you'll be able to get this film from Severin as well but Pagini, Paganini Horror I don't know I haven't seen this movie before Donald Pleasance is in it Daria Nicolodi who was I think um, um, in a bunch of Italian giallos and stuff didn't she marry um, Argento I don't know maybe uh, but it's directed by Luigi Cosi uh, an all-girl rock group head to a remote villa for a music video shootout. They are in desperate need of a hit single and purchase sheet music from the mysterious Mr. Pickett, played by Donald Pleasance. They are told the music is a lost piece from the legendary violinist Niccolo Paganini and see this as their ticket to the top of the charts. Little do they know that his music is cursed and that they have just unleashed hell upon themselves. Soon the spirit of Paganini is roaming the villa, armed with a murderous violin and picking off the fame-hungry band members one by one. Awesome. That sounds so fucking good. I love it. Paganini Horror. This movie is probably from the 70s or 80s, it doesn't say, but uh, it's got to be from that era. I wish they would just give me the year, but it's not here. Uh, <clears throat> English subtitles, region B locked, so uh, if you're not in the UK, or if you're not all region rather, you most likely won't be able to enjoy this. Sometimes it's wrong, but I think for 88 films, a lot of their stuff is region, region B lock. So uh, yeah, so US will have will have a release in the US by the end of the year uh, from Severin. So I'm not exactly sure. I think it's October that they're releasing it, but it could be November. I don't know. Anyways, here's a little booklet. Um, so this is cool. 88 Films, I'm happy to support them. Um, and I love the cover artwork. And they just kind of haven't been putting stuff out, as as much stuff out as they were um, 
at one point. So let's see. It's the same, except it just doesn't say 88 films on it or have a rating logo. So I will actually kind of display that. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to support 88 films. And this is definitely a title I've been wanting to see. A lot of good stuff coming out lately that I haven't seen and have wanted to see. Like The Prey, uh, this, and um, uh, just some other stuff from Arrow, I guess. Um, what did they put out? What did I show you in the last update? A lot of stuff. But anyways, Paganini Horror. Awesome. So, next up, I actually went and scooped this up last night. I saw this in theaters. I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was great. But uh, I was obviously going to buy it. So, Child's Play, the new one. Not bad. I didn't think it was bad. Um, so, Prey... Hills Have Eyes 2. There's just a lot of good stuff. Oh, a lot of stuff from Scream Factory. Scream, Scream Factory's been putting out a ton of good stuff lately. That, um, just like good hammer stuff. I don't know. Anyways, uh, <laughs> it's been a long day. All right. I'm really, really excited for this Epic Pictures releasing. I've been wanting to open this and watch this badly all week. Uh, I've heard really good things about the movie in here. So let's open it up and see what lie inside this package from Epic Pictures releasing. Cool, so we get a J card for hoax, which is awesome. I can put that in my hoax case. And then Harpoon, which I don't really know much about, but that must be a new one. Um, and, oh wow, okay, oops, I forgot. I had ordered a few things from this company. So first up we have Lodgers. Uh, I remember people were talking about this one quite a bit. Uh, when it came out a year or two ago, and I had never seen it, but I heard it was pretty good. So, the Dread uh, Dread Central, I think, release Sinister Presence confines orphan twins Rachel and Edward to their home and torments them as a punishment for their ancestors' sins. And yeah, I, I've heard it's pretty good. So, uh, two disc set looks like a Blu ray DVD combo pack. Um, so, that's cool from Epic Pictures releasing, and then we have, save that one for last, shit, we have Arctic, and I already ordered this and already owned it, so must have ordered it twice, uh, that's not something I do often, um, so if anybody wants Arctic, it sounds good though, it's, uh, I haven't seen it yet, but it's about a, uh, a serial killer who trains his son how to commit crimes, and then they meet this dude, and he, like, tries to, uh, Persuade the sun or something like that to I don't know, but sounds good. And then I got this one uh, The golem just because I had seen this around quite a bit and want to check it out during an outbreak of a deadly plague a mysterical a mystery mystical woman must save her tight-knit Jewish community from foreign invaders But the entity she conjures to protect them is a far greater evil So the golem I don't really know anything about this movie. So if anybody's seen it, let me know if it's good or decent or whatever. Um, cool, there's reversible cover artwork, which is kind of lame, but I don't know. That's the reversible cover artwork. Um, so yeah, again, if anybody's seen this one, let me know your thoughts on Golem. Dread Central number 12. I don't know if these are BDRs, let's find out. They are not, these are official Blu-ray discs, so that's cool. So yeah, the Golem. And last but not least, super excited for this one. Uh, I've heard really good things. Candy corn, yes. Uh, Tis the season. October is rapidly approaching, and I am so excited that I have a really good... Like, last year I think it was witching season, which was okay. Um, but I love each year finding, like, a good uh, Halloween you know, themed movie that's just totally in the spirit of Halloween. And uh, so this year it's going to be Candy Corn for me. And I've heard it's good, so I'm stoked about that. Uh, what's the difference between the covers here? You guys tell me. Um, what's the difference between that and this? Looks the same. I don't know. I really don't know. It looks to be the exact same. So that's weird. I don't think I've seen that before. 
reversible covers that are identical. Oh, well, one of them has a 20. No, they both have 20. I don't know. But uh, I'm definitely excited to check this out. And I've kind of been doing the arrow thing with uh, at all releases. So I have this Candy Corn J card, which is a perfect, almost perfect fit. I'm going to put that in there like that. And boom, there we go. Uh, it's Halloween weekend and a group of bullies are planning their annual hazing on local outcast, Jacob Atkins. When they, uh, when they take things too far, he's resurrected to seek revenge against those who wronged him. So it sounds like a very typical, uh, story, but I'm sorry. So last Halloween was the barn as well, I think, right? The barn and witching season, maybe. They were the, they were my Halloween themed horror films that I watched last year. So this year, hopefully Candy Corn is... As good as the barn, if not better. So we will find out. I love putting the J cards in these cases, though. The problem is this is just ever so slightly too big, just by like a tiny little bit. And let's see if I can fix that. Grab my harpoon, do that. Oh, look, and they even have a perfect reference for me here. And then grab my razor blade and slice away. Oh, it's thick though. Very, very thick. You guys are like, why are you doing this on camera? Because it's my video, I can do what I want and I choose to do this. All right, so slice that off. Gives it a little bit, a tiny little bit of um, room to fit perfectly in there like that. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you. I just thank myself. PJ Souls is in this as well. That's awesome. Courtney Gaines and Tony Todd. Fuck yeah. I didn't even realize that. That's awesome. Super cool. Courtney Gaines, huh? How he plays a sheriff, it looks like. And Tony Todd plays like a derelict bum dude. I don't know, but Awesome. All right, so that's candy corn. Oh, on the subject of candy corn, it just so happened that Fright Rags is doing a candy corn um, collection, I guess you could say. Uh, and so instead of getting like a po uh, a uh, hoodie or a t-shirt or something like that. I opted to just grab this little poster from the film because I love that cover artwork so much. And I'm going to frame this uh, very soon. I just think that's really, really cool. And so hopefully the movie's good because I got a poster of it now too. I like this so much. And it was only like 10 bucks, so. Had to grab that. And that's Fright Rag. So if you guys see this movie and you're looking for a really cool poster, for 10 bucks, go over to Fright Rags and find it there. All right, next up we have a package from Severin. And I know a lot of people have been really excited for this release. I think it got delayed and people were saying that I heard they had it early at one of their conventions, and that was kind of not cool for us folks that had pre-ordered it and had to wait, but whatever. It's here now. No more complaining. Um, all right, so let's see. So it looks like two films, some swag, some cool stickers, Severin. I'll show you guys everything again. I'm just trying to get everything out of here first. That's rad. Wow, that's really cool. Alright, so yeah, I think I got it all. Alright, so we have this really cool like holographic or not holographic, but you know what I mean. Maybe it is. I forget the word. But uh I don't really know what it's from. But it's like a thick postcard that is, um, what's that word? All right, and then you get some cool swag as always, a sticker, 
from one of the films. More stickers, a Pixel Elixir sticker, and a cool bookmark from Pixel Elixir. So lots of cool swag there. And then we have Wax Mask, which is a Giallo film, Italian Giallo. Uh, Dario Argento presents Wax Mask. Try and open this up. Without destroying the slip. And I had picked up a UK Blu-ray of this a while ago, um, which I can now get rid of, probably. Um, oh, I love that artwork. So, from most accounts, it's kind of a mediocre film. It's not amazing, but... Um, Sergio Stivaletti directed this among the horror Italian horror greats. Um, kind of like second and third tier greats, I would say, but still definitely a great. Um, who am I to say what tier he is? Anyways, it's a Blu-ray and DVD combo pack. Uh, really cool little, little J card there that has all the uh, titles. Oh, sorry, this is the motion picture soundtrack. So, so cool. So it's a CD and a, yeah, it's a CD and a Blu-ray. That's cool. I'd rather have that, honestly, than a DVD and a Blu-ray. Uh, so last great Italian gore film of the 20th century, now scanned in 4K with all no, new bonus materials, chock full of features. It says, in the mid-90s, Argento approached a physically and professionally ailing Lucio Fulci to direct one final production, an over-the-top shocker about grisly murders at a Paris wax museum. But when Fulci passed away only weeks before filming began, Argento turned to Stivaletti, the FX genius on Phenomena, Opera, Demons, and Cemetery Man, to make his feature film debut. Originally, Grand, original Grand Guignol director... Uh, performer Robert Hossein and Aldo Masasso um, star in the DVD drive-in in what DVD drive-in hails as an old-timey luridus married to state-of-the-art gore from a screenplay co-written by Fulci with cinematography by Stiletti uh, now featuring a 4k scan from the original camera negative chock full of features including audio commentaries interviews with producers uh, directors production designers uh, the Chamber of Horrors interviews with producer Dario Argento, Living Dolls interviews with producer Dario Argento again, so multiple interviews with all kinds of people involved with the production and, um, yeah, making of this movie, so that's awesome. Um, so yeah, I gotta check this one out, definitely. I think this will be, um, a good time to watch it. Kind of bummed that I, I'm always impatient and just buying things that eventually almost always make it uh, to Blu-ray in the U.S., but uh, what, what can I say? It happens. It happens to the best of us. I'm trying to get this in here without damaging the um, jacket, but so that's really nice. Nice release, as always. Severin doing awesome things. And then we have Killer Crocodile and Killer Crocodile 2. Two amazingly cheesy uh, Killer Croc flicks from, I think, the... Ooh, shit. From the 80s, but... Um, hold on. I can only focus on so much at once. And I don't want to damage this. So, I'm going to carefully open it. Alright, so... I kind of like how they did that. Um, they just did... It's a double feature, and they did one... You know, one side of the slipcover. Uh, one of the films and then the other, the other, obviously. And then the inside... I'm trying to get this off, sorry. Hold up. So... Uh, 1989, so the late 80s. Um, on Blu-ray for the first time ever in America, more than a decade after the Spielberg blockbuster, uh, a dream team of shock maestros, including producer-turned-director dir Fabio De Angelis, uh, who did Dr. Butcher, M.D., Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals, Cannibal screenwriter, Gorgu Gianna de Rossi, Rosso de Rossi, and uh, Oscar-nominated composer Riz Ortoloni, or Ortoloni, 
uh, created one of the most ridiculously entertaining Jaws ripoffs in Italian sleaze history. When a humongous crocodile begins chomping on a tropical island community, a group of idealistic young environmental uh, environmentalists uh, will clash with a crusty redneck hunter to destroy the monster reptile spawned by toxic waste. Awesome. Pure cheesy entertainment. Between the dialogue, the giant croc, and the gore, we can't recommend it enough. Uh, some special features on this, uh, some interviews, and um, mostly interviews with uh, cinematographer, uh, actors, and uh, makeup effects artists. So that's awesome. Um, uh, Gianetto De Rosso. So that's so cool, De Rossi. Um, awesome. So yeah, I've never seen this one. Killer. I always mix this movie up with Alligator, but Killer Crocodile and Killer Crocodile Two. Uh, let me know if it has, if they have alternate titles as well, because I don't know they they could very well. But um, being Italian films, but also with the thing you get a little keychain, which is kind of cool. I might put this on my uh, on my keys. Why not? Right. It looks like a a hand. I don't know what of the movies this is from, but <clears throat> it's from one of them, I assume. So that's cool. A little hand keychain. And it's pretty heavy. Looks like some sort of steel. Alright, and last but not least, we have the latest package from Vinegar Syndrome. Really stoked on this one as well. Um, this was a good month after having a couple, I think two kind of drag months for me. Um, they came back strong this month and um, they got some awesome stuff coming up too. You guys sure know about it. but Alright, so we have four films in here. And then we have um, some swag, I guess. Uh, Tammy and the T-Rex limited edition Blu-ray available. Awesome. So this will be cool to put in the uh, release when it comes out, finally. And that's cool. Alright, so we got four films this month. All stuff that I'm really kind of stoked to check out. Um, there's one in, in particular. So first up, we have um, Pledge Night. Really, 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 really cool. Um slip cover there double sided really stoked on this one never seen it before uh -huh. it says fuck off life sucks marijuana hell on wheels pin all cool things pledge night it's hazing hazing season and fi up uh at fi up and the boys are up to all sorts of nasty pranks on their hapless pledges in between regular bouts of wetting their whistles at the campus water watering hole uh, with some of the area's beautiful sorority bays, but this is going to be one literal hell week as they unwittingly unleash the spirit of Acid Sid, an unfortunate pledge who was accidentally dissolved in acid during a hazing prank gone wrong 20 years earlier. As the helpless frat boys and pledges fall victim to Sid's wrath and seemingly indestructible towering zombie corpse, it's up to the st stragglers to figure out how to kill someone who's been dead for two decades or die trying. Truly one-of-a-kind blending of post-Animal House TNA sex comedy and gore-filled supernatural slasher, Paul Ziller's Pledge Night unloads a nearly non-stop barrage of weirdness on the viewer, from the jaw-dropping, all based on actual practices, hazing rituals, as meticulously researched by writer-producer Joyce Snyder, to the slimy and often explosive gore from effects wizard Dean Cardalaws along with a soundtrack performed by Anthrax. Awesome. Pledge Night serves up a non-stop ride of horror and weirdness guaranteed to keep you glued to the screen. Mouth Agape. Vinegar Syndrome is excited to offer this one-of-a-kind slice of sleaze on Blu-ray for the very first time. Nearly restored in, four, in 2K, rather. A uh, couple special features. Uh, video interview with director. Uh, interview with writer-producer Joyce Snyder. Interview with actor Robert Lentini. Interview with actor Arthur Lundquist. So awesome stuff. Locations featurette everything. Vinegar Syndrome is a shining example of physical media companies at their very, very, very best. Um, it's just top of the line stuff. Super high quality. Really cool. You get two different cover artworks. I really like that. Super 80s. And then you get that one as well. 
which is cool. I'm going to go with the Super 80s awesome reversible cover artwork. And this movie is from 1988, so a nice late 80s slice and dice uh, resurrection possession slasher type movie. Awesome. Fuck yeah. Pledge night. Super stoked. Just love it. All right. So that's uh, first one. Then we have um, Sectra Siniestra. Really crazy cover. There's one side, and then there's another side. Just batshit insanity, it looks like. Awesomeness. Um, all right, so. Open this up real quick. So. After being found in bed with another woman, Frederick, a retired mercenary, is blinded by his deranged and spiteful wife, who is then con confined to an asylum. Deciding to start a new life and family with his mistress, Helen, but finding that he is unable to, un to successfully impregnate her, Frederick consults with a fraternity doctor who agrees to assist in helping them conceive a baby. But unknown to the happy couple, a member of a satanic sect, Decides that Helen will be the perfect mother for the Antichrist and intervenes. <laughs> Sounds crazy. I've never even heard of this movie. Uh, it's from 1982. Ooh. Shit. I think Vinegar Syndrome finally did away with that um, thing on the top. But still, uh, really cool. Reversal cover artwork as well. I'm definitely going to flip it. I love this. Um... So yeah, it just sounds like some batshit craziness from 1982. All of these releases are all region as well. Look at that cover artwork. That's so sick. I love it. And then, of course, you get uh, this awesome heavy-duty slip. So, uh, special features on this release. Um, sorry, I shouldn't have done that. But. Newly scanned and re restored in 2K. Uh, promotional stills. Audio commentary from film historians. So they couldn't get much on the making of this movie, it looks like, but... Uh, directed by Ignacio F. Iquorno. I don't know, but there's not a lot on, uh, in the way of special features on this one, but that's okay. Still cool, batshit craziness, and I'm sure it looks great. Um, all right, and then we have two more. I don't even know which one I want to see more. Beyond Evil, look at how awesome that is. Oh, so cool. And you can see that green, like, uh, glare or whatever. It's like a shiny material. Uh, man, I'm so psyched. Beyond Evil. This is seriously the best month that Vinegar Syndrome's had for a long time. Really cool under artwork as well. Can it get any better than that? Probably not. This movie from 1980 stars John Saxon, Linda J. George, and Mike, Linda Day George, who I love, and uh, Michael Dante. Um, architect Larry Andrews and his glamorous wife Barbara have just arrived on a Filipino island uh, where Larry and his business partner Dell are completing work on a new luxury condominium building. Dell reveals that he's found the perfect island home, a centuries old mansion nestled next to the forest. The only problem is that the local legend has it that the mansion is haunted by an evil witch named Alma Martin, who was murdered by her adulterous husband, only to rise from the dead and kill him along with anyone else who comes near her cursed property. As the Andrews settle in, Barbara begins to sense a strange presence surrounding the house and is slowly possessed by Alma's vengeful spirit, who is determined to use Barbara's body as a vessel for her to re-enter this world and soon demonstrates that she has no concerns over murdering anyone who tries to stop her. Sounds amazing. It's from the director of uh, Graduation Day, second film from Herb Freed. That's awesome. That probably explains why Linda Day George is in this, but uh, awesome. Sounds fucking cool. And it's from 1980. I said that, I know. I'm trying to open this. I'm struggling, but I got it. Alrighty. Beyond Evil. Damn it. They make it so tough. So tough to get into it. Alright, so let's see what the reversible artwork is. Pretty cool. I think I like this a little better. But uh, that's cool though. I like the colors. It's just a little, I don't like the devil. It looks kind of goofy. Um, this cover looks creepier to me. So 
So, so anyways, that's Beyond Evil. Super stoked to check this one out. And again, another amazing slip cover and release from Vincent. So that's awesome. And last but not least, really, really excited for this one. We have James Hong in the Vineyard. And I know everybody's been showing these off. I'm kind of late to the game on it, but I haven't had a lot of time to do videos lately. So, um, 1989. And look at that. It's so cool. Great artwork. So, this movie, I think, has a... I don't know, actually. I think it's, it's US Blu-ray debut. I know I have... A, a foreign release of this movie. Maybe uh, if Arrow Video put it out on DVD. I don't know. Somebody did. But uh, <laughs> so there's the reversible cover artwork. I don't know. I like them both. But I think for now, I'm going to go with this. going to go with this. Um, so I'll read you a quick synopsis and we are done here. So, this movie from 1989, uh, the wines created by Dr. Ellison Poe have been known for decades as among the finest in the world, but unknown to the public, Poe has been using his vintin, vintining and chemistry f skills as a front for a much more sinister purpose, harvesting flesh, fresh blood for his young, vic uh, young victims to produce an elixir designed to keep him young forever. Unfortunately, his special potion seems to be weakening in its strength, and Poe finds himself in need of fresh bodies. This reminds me of a mix between um, Rejuvenator and Reanimator. <laughs> um, if you guys haven't seen Rejuvenator, check it out. It's really good. Um, but his special potion seems to be weakening, and deciding to use his connections to the film industry, he presents himself as a potential film investor and invites a group of attractive young actors and models to a secluded island mansion with the intent of harvesting their life-sustaining properties. <laughs> when they arrive, Poe becomes convinced that statuesque beauty, Jezebel, might be the ideal candidate from which more elixir can be created and sends his henchmen out with the task of violently killing off her friends. A wild late 80s horror film starring and co-directed by William Rice by character actor James Hong, uh, from Big Trouble in Little China, of course. Uh, the Vineyard mixes just about every popular horror trope around in a non-stop assault on the senses, uh, featuring everything from zombies to supernatural mysticism to touching to slasher touches, along with bouts of martial arts and loads of TNA, all photographed by Jim, Jim Durlam, gone in 60 seconds. Vinegar Syndrome is delighted to present this Blu-ray, debut of The Vineyard, newly re restored in 4K. Awesome. Uh, special features, newly scanned and restored, obviously, I just said that. Welcome to the Vineyard, interviews with directors, uh, producers, interviews with co-director William Rice, and an interview with cinematographer John Durham, Durham. reversible cover artwork and subtitles, which is included in with every release, so. Super awesome, four great releases, I think they're all going to be really, really fun, cheesy 80s, uh, late 80s uh, horror films, so. That's awesome. That's my haul, guys. I've been rambling long enough. I'm tired of hearing this voice, so uh, I'm going to put it to bed. Thank you for watching. As always, stay tuned for uh, another video very soon within the next couple days. I've got uh, some good things coming. All right. Have a good night. Peace.